Welcome to the third part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass where we take a look at the curves. They are an incredibly powerful tool for editing especially the contrasts of your images but they can do a whole lot more too. Now they may be a little bit complex to understand at first but I highly highly recommend you to learn them because they are so damn powerful. But basically at the core they're a tool that lets you tweak the brightness values and the contrasts of your image as well as some color tweaks but with extremely high precision. So let's jump into Lightroom and look at the curves. So below the basic panel we have the tone curve panel which is where our curves are located. You have two different types of curves and five curves in total. So the two first curves are the luminous curves which let you tweak the brightness values of the image and the three other curves are the red, green and blue channel curves which let you tweak the colors of these channels. So basically every image consists of three channels which are the red, green and the blue channels. So these RGB curves will let you tweak those channels. Now let's start off with the first curve on the left. So here you have a straight line going across this square. Now this line represents the brightness values of your image. The bottom left hand side corner is pure black and the top white corner is pure white. The middle here would be at 50% brightness and you have the histogram showing on the background as an overlay here. Now the basic way a curve works is when you drag up it will make things brighter and when you drag down it will make things darker. Now this first curve here in the panel will kind of ease out your movement so it's an easier tool to use but it's not quite as powerful as the second curve but basically they can do pretty much the same things. Now now with the first curve you can also tweak the values using these sliders here on the bottom and you can refine the tweaks with these sliders here in the middle. Here you can see that the sliders are called highlights, lights, darks and shadows and when you hover over each one of them it will show the corresponding part of the curve that it's going to tweak. Now the reason we have lights and darks and not whites and blacks here is because the bottom corner here is the black point and the top corner here is the white point but you can't tweak those points and the lights and the darks are kind of in the middle of the highlights and the shadows. So even though you kind of have the same stuff in the basic panel with the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, it's a little bit different here with the curve even though it seems to be kind of the same. But the highlights and the shadows here are basically the exact same as the highlights and the shadows here in the basic panel. Not quite, but pretty much the same. Now next to all of the curves here, you have this little circle that you can click on and then hover over the image. And when I click and drag up or down on my image, it will tweak the curve from that brightness point of the image. So instead of using the actual curve to tweak the curve, I can actually click and drag on the areas of the image that I want to tweak. But keep in mind that this will change the whole image, it will just base the selection on the brightness value on the place where you click. Now I don't really want to use the first curve, I'm actually going to want to use the second curve here, so I'm going to reset this curve by right clicking on the curve and then selecting reset all to reset this curve. Now going over to the second curve, which is a lot more powerful than the first curve, and you'll see why in just a second, but the second curve has dots in both of the corners, so these are the white point and the black point of your image and you can create new points by hovering over the curve and clicking on anywhere in the curve to create a new point. And when you click and drag you can tweak the point that you just created to tweak the brightness values of that part of the image. Now this is the reason why the second curve is a lot better because you get so much more precision out of the second curve because you can create as many of these anchor points as you ever want to but in the first curve you kind of ease out everything that you do so you can do so much more with the second curve once you learn to use it. The first one is easier to learn but the second one is a whole lot more powerful. Basically we're still only editing the brightness values and the contrasts of our image but this curve is the most precise way to do it in all of Lightroom. Now if we just reset this curve we can actually select presets for medium or strong contrast in the drop down menu down here. So I'll go with a strong contrast and you can see that it creates a little bit of an S curve. And you might hear talk about an S curve and that is the most common way to add contrast to your image with curves is creating an S shape. It doesn't matter what type of an S it is as long as it kind of stays as an S shape shaped curve. So the way you would create an S curve is by clicking and dragging up on the highlights and then clicking and dragging down on the shadow areas. And now we have an S shape here in the curve and that creates a nice amount of contrast to our image. 
and then we can further tweak this just as much as we ever want to. If we want to have a very strong contrast, we can make the S a lot steeper. And if we want to have less contrast, we can make this more of a line instead of an S. Now with this second curve, you can also manipulate the white point and the black point of your image. So if I drag up from the black point, this will make the black point of our image actually brighter than what it should be. So instead of the blacks being black, they are now a gray value. And we can do the same thing for the white point. So if I pull down on the whites, now our white point isn't white, it's actually gray. So you can always think of the white point and the black point as anchor points for the white and the black values, but you can manipulate them any which way you want to. And this is how you would create a vintage type look for your photos too, because vintage photos usually don't have pure whites or pure blacks that are always a little bit closer to a gray value. Now, if we reset this channel once again, and I just pull up on the black point, you can see that all of the image is getting brighter because this white line here represents the brightness values of our original image. And the little gray line here is the brightness values of our original image without any changes applied to them. Now we can do the same thing with the white point by pulling down, so this will darken the whole image. And if we actually kind of invert these two, we'll get an inverted weird type of, I don't know, scary effect for the image. Something you would probably never do, but this is just how the curves can manipulate your photo. So basically pulling down on the white point is just going to lower that white line, which is our original image brightness values and make everything darker. So when they touch the bottom here, which is black, we have a black image. Same thing with the black point. If we pull it up, everything on that white line, which is our original image will get brighter as they're going up on the curves. And when I hit the top, we get a white image. Now we could, for example, have the black point somewhere here and pull lower than our black point. But now things that were brighter in our original image are actually getting darker than our black point, which also makes things look very funny. Same thing with the white point. So basically what you would want to have is everything below the white point, no matter how you tweak the white point and everything above the black point, no matter how you tweak the black point to avoid anything weird going on with your edit. Because the white point and the black point kind of should always be the brightest and the darkest part parts of your image. But once again, I'm just going to create a very quick S curve to create some nice contrast. And I think this is looking quite good. I'm actually going to pull up a bit on the black part and then just a bit down on the shadows and a little bit brighter, maybe with the mid tones here. Okay, something like this is looking good to my eye. Now, all of this is personal preference. So do what you want with your image but I like to have a bit of contrast with the black point pulled up just slightly. And once again, we can preview our tweaks with this eye here. And I actually think it's a bit too contrasty. So let's just tweak the contrast a bit more subtle. And something like this is starting to look good in my opinion. Now adding contrast to your image also adds some saturation to your image. So you have this refine saturation slider here to take out a bit of that saturation. It's basically the same as the saturation slider in the basic panel, but just a lot more subtle. And now we have our contrast set the way we want them to be. So let's move on to the RGB curves. So with the RGB curves, instead of tweaking the brightness values, you're actually tweaking color values. So if we go over to the red curve, this line is still the brightness of our image. But if I pull up on the highlights, instead of making the highlights brighter, I'm actually adding red color to the highlights. Now pulling down on the green, we'll add cyan and you have this overlay where you can see this is red and this is cyan. So you know which color you're adding to the image. If we go to the green curve, pulling up, we'll add green, pulling down, we'll add magenta. On the blue curve, pulling up, we'll add blue, pulling down, we'll add yellow. So you can create anchor points just like you could with the second luminance curve, but instead of adding brightness or taking down brightness, you're actually adding colors into your image. But once again, the same thing, this line here is the brightness of your image. So up here is the bright parts and I can add yellow to the bright parts by pulling down on the blue curve and add blue to the shadows by pulling up on the blue curve on the bottom part of the curve. Now, I personally don't really use our RGB curves that much, but they are incredibly powerful if you want to tweak the colors in specific brightness ranges of your image. They are a really great way to add some special color effects to your images while editing. But once again, be careful with this because if you go too far with the curves, you might end up doing something weird for your image. 
but in Lightroom you can always go back and reset the channel so you're not going to destroy anything so just experiment it to see what works for you and of course if you want to create some very strange effects do that it's all up to you so all in all the curves are extremely powerful for tweaking the contrasts and the colors of your image and the best way to learn them is to just use them and test them out in many different ways the very basic use of curves is actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it but you can do so much with them once you really learn to use them and in my opinion they are one of the best if not the absolute best tool for editing photos inside of Lightroom or any other editing software that you use. But that concludes the third part of this tutorial series. If you have any questions about curves or anything else just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. In the next part we'll tweak the colors of our image even more with the HSL panel and the color grading panel. So I'll see you in the next one.